Travis in Albuquerque, New Mexico writes, he says, the other day, uh oh, I was wondering how many watts am I actually using? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I borrowed my brother's Macintosh MC462 because the meters show the approximate watts being used. I usually listen at moderate listening levels, and to my amazement, the meters stayed mostly at the midpoint between 0.45 watts and 4.5 watts. About 2.5 watts, okay. So I decided to crank away at an incredibly loud level. You had to scream to hear somebody else in the other room. Watch your hearing there, buddy. The meters never went past 4.5 watts. They hovered from 2.5 to 4.5 watts. <clears throat> My question for you is, why do we need these big, giant, powerful amplifiers? <laughs> well, a couple of things. First off, you are right. I would say for the vast majority of us, the average amount of watts, even when we're playing fairly loud, is fairly low. Now, much depends on your sensitivity of the speaker, which is how we rate speakers, right? So uh, the PS Audio FR30 loudspeakers are about 88 dB, which means that for one watt of input power, they will produce 88 dB of sound when you're one meter away from the speaker. And to get higher, of course, you're going to put more watts into that. But, you know, w we rarely listen above, say, 100 dB. That's pretty loud, 110. Um, and, and yes, it takes much, many, many more watts to get up to that point. But the average of what we play with music, which has its ups and downs, a lot of them, dynamics, um, doesn't, it really doesn't require a lot. Now, let me make one other point. Your Macintosh amplifiers, meters, or any mechanical meter, doesn't really show peaks that are hitting, you know, that you're just seeing the average, and it's a pretty damped down average. So I wouldn't get overly, you really need a scope uh, to see what's actually happening, and you'll probably see some very big dips. For instance, when your speakers dip down to a low impedance, as almost all speakers do, aren't these reverbs cool? I love these reverbs. It, these are all hand-built. The only ones in the world like it. And they sound amazing. Yeah, love it. <laughs> in any case, what was I talking about? Oh, uh, average watts. See, I get all wigged out by, by fancy stuff. Um, we don't use that many watts, but a couple of things. When the impedance of a speaker dips, there's a huge inrush of current to fill that gap, and that's important. And you don't usually see that. And it doesn't help it play louder. It just helps it play flatter. So let's, and that's usually in the bass region. Um, you also need watts, surprisingly enough, in the form of voltage when the impedance goes up, say at resonance of the speaker. Because while you're not drawing a lot of current, you are drawing a lot of voltage. And even though that watts is amps times volts, right? So you need voltage and current to really equal watts. But an amplifier that isn't very big, that doesn't have many watts, also doesn't have much voltage. So we need voltage swings, whether or not we're drawing current. And when we are drawing current, we need a lot of power there to make that happen. But in general, we don't need with quotation marks, big amps. Now, we like big amps for a couple of reasons. One, headroom, as when you get those, bang, these big spikes, you don't want to come close to clipping. Two, I like a factor of 10, I'll settle on a factor of five, of loafing, if you will. And I like to use a car analogy. Imagine a car with a little weeny three or four cylinder engine that's really working hard to keep up with your thoughts on things, right? And, and, but I, when I say thoughts, let, let me rephrase that. Th your foot on the gas pedal. So when I get into a little weenie car, and I drive a Tesla, and that sucker just pins you against the, you know, that's got, that's got some power. But if you have a regular car, a little weenie car, 
And every time I'm driving it, and I like I step on the gas to go somewhere and try and get around somebody, it's like, and it's like, oh, you know, hang on. Um, it's struggling to the extent that it can. I mean, it's working as hard as it possibly can, and you're not really getting the results you want. In a hi-fi system, you want to stay away from that. You want that amplifier loafing at all times, whether it's peaks, current demands for impedance, voltage demands for resonance, et cetera, et cetera, because you want to stay within that linear region as opposed to trying to get close to the edges. It just sounds better. So long-winded explanation, but there you go. Look who's talking. <laughs> Mr. Longwind himself. All right, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.